so you know, when people die, they might have questions for you. Well, you know, not you, but death. You mean like how did Betty White outlast me? I will remember you. Ooh, that's a hot mug, guys. Hey guys, this is my review for episode 11 of Supernatural's season 6, the mid-season finale. This is the episode where Dean becomes death for a day, and it almost has the ability to be actually a very, very good episode. If anything, this is actually a pretty decent mid-season finale, which, not too bad to say, Supernatural is at least continuing that trait of decent mid-season finales. Uh, it depends on how we return is really the big question. A lot of aspects about this episode are pretty uh, commendable. Everything from soulless Sam going to the neuron nth degree to stop his soul from being put back into his body to Dean and death getting a second conversation as well as a challenge for Dean and the implications and the hurdles that he goes through his own kind of Herculean like uh, series of challenges to try and get his brother's soul back for that purpose. And those are the two focuses, Dean being death for a day and Sam almost killing Bobby and Bobby and him having a really good back and forth row. And while Dean's story of morality and the question of death and life, while starting off to be funny. Everything is dust in the wind. Only for a moment. That's it? A Kansas song? It actually really goes into a deeper level of the meaning of life and also just the cruelty of the world as well as the matter-of-factness of it all to the intensity and the horror of Sam trying to kill Bobby and the humor that comes with that as well as the dread and the the suspense that comes from that. If there was anything to maybe be a little bit kind of nitpicky about it is Dean's dialogue because he does have a few bits in this episode where you're just like, that's more so acquainted to the writing and maybe a little bit of Jensen's overacting. But I do find that his conniption with the girl not wanting to kill her, that does lead to a road. It just takes a little bit of an awkward step. There is a little dip where Dean does take the ring off to save the boyfriend of the killed nurse. And while that part does kind of is a little bit abrupt, it does fix itself with Dean going back and taking the girl's life because that is how it should be. Does this episode do enough with the death side of the story as I feel it should? I kind of feel it's a little short. I feel that he only takes the life of five people in the end. I feel that maybe that should have been a little bit more, definitely a lot more of a weight on his shoulder should have been kind of dealt out. I feel to really kind of give the perspective of it all, it should have been a montage at one point, just showing him having to put down a ton of people. I do like that it jumps from robber, heart attack, to girl dying of a heart disease. That jump is good and it does kind of take you for a loop, but I kind of feel there should have been a little bit more of an establishment of it because it feels like Dean just drops out after five people. Not even five people. He he fucks it up on the third person that he goes and talks to. You had one job. You had one very clear task given to you and you cock it up not even before the tenth person or not even before the fifth person you meet. So that is my kind of major conniption is that I feel it comes to this uh, crossroad way too early. But everything else about this episode is fantastic. I love the Bobby and Sam dynamic. I think it's really well done. I like how these two are both good at their own game, but they are working against each other. And there is this back and forth of who is the hunter and who is the prey. And when the episode ends with Sam nearly killing him, it does give you that big woo. And while Dean fails, that whole aspect of him going back and taking the girl's life, making up for his own mistake, is supposed to be kind of the gratifying factor. And I do feel that death gives him a pass for very lukewarm reasons, but he does explain that you guys keep coming back and you guys keep cocking stuff up. So if you, I don't fix this, you're gonna do something worse. So the episode ends with him shoving Sam's soul back down his gullet and it ends with him screaming and we're left on that cliffhanger for a while. And to be frank, I have been a bit harsh on this season and this episode, in accordance with the last few, have brought back that flavor that want that drive to me 
and I'm kind of waiting for it to be absolutely crushed as the season progresses, obviously. But this was a really decent mid-season finale, and I'm going to give it credit for that. So in the end, I'm going to give this episode a 6 out of 7. It is quite close to a 7, don't get me wrong. I just feel like I said that conniption, that sort of mm, lacking amount of time passed or challenges passed with Dina's death. Uh, it should have been a little bit drawn out. It should have had a little bit more content to it to really fully grasp that hard decision and not make it look like Dean completely fucked the ball on the third down. <laughs> But I asked you guys what you had to say, so let's read those comments off. After all the cautions about what would happen if Sam got his soul back and the death of Crowley, did anyone think that Sam would be getting his soul back just an episode later? That is actually kind of a thing that we're starting to see, especially in this season, and you pointing that out, I didn't even really realize that. This episode shows the brother's story. We see Dean rush into his deal with, the death, with death with the idea that he'll be able to majestically save his brother's soul. Simultaneously to that, we watch Sam do whatever he can to prevent his body from containing a soul. Both brothers make deals, both make them do horrible things, and both of them fail. I only have two issues with this episode. The entire Dean being death for 24 hours and how it is played out is pretty predictable. I did enjoy watching it, but I do see it as also being an issue. And I can see where you're coming from there. I, like I guys said in my review, I feel like it should have been a little bit longer. There should have been more to it. In the cat and mouse game that Sam plays with Bobby, oh boy, the writers make Bobby look like he's never seen a horror movie before. I don't know. I feel that like they did that pretty good in terms of like the back and forth and the, the, the tension in that scene. Sam gets his soul back. We basically see the end of Solo Sam. I like Solo Sam. He was creepy and wrong, but he was amazing. It may sound weird, but anytime I can see the embodiment of death means it's usually going to be a good time and, and a bad time for Dean, although. I can't help but feel that Dean learned absolutely nothing because of the way he continues to cheat death for Sam again and again and again, making this episode kind of pointless. But maybe death already knew that at and just needed a good laugh or something. Also, that Sam Torrance moment was pretty great. Goddamn, I love Sola Sam, RIP. Truly the saddest loss of this season. I do see where you're coming from in terms of Dean not really getting anything. That was evident with how many times that the show was going to get renewed. Like anything that these guys learned, clearly, as we can see, See, never really ever learned. Appointment in Samara is a good episode. I love Robert England's cameo at the beginning of the, this episode when he does the Freddy laugh. This episode reminds me a bit of a Simpsons Halloween special where Homer becomes death. It was very good when Dean goes around and killing people and then he gets the girl and refuses it. And Tessa says, what did you think? It was going to be all cops and robbers and heart attacks? She's 12 with a heart, serious heart condition. And when he doesn't kill her and other people die in her place because she doesn't die the way she was supposed to. Love Julian Richards as death. They have never complained about him in Supernatural. I love that they get the hint that souls are like mini nuclear bomb reactors. I do like how they represent the soul and it's like this beacon of bastion of light as it's being shoved into Sam. I think that was good. I really enjoyed this episode. Glad to see death once again. As usual, Julian Richards is great. I really enjoy seeing this actor who the guy who played Freddy is here. I'm surprised that death decided to allow Dean to be him for 24 hours. Glad that Tessa was there to help Dean out. She's so right. Dean always finds a way to disturb the balance. I also enjoyed Balthazar's appearance. Not surprised that Sam doesn't want his soul back nor that he was willing to do anything to stop it including trying to kill Bobby and that's what makes this such a good back and forth episode this constant tension. Appointment to Samara is among my top 10 favorite episodes of the show. Wow that's high praise. Dean having to understand the natural order of being death the horseman was an excellent way for us to see why the boys get away with countless resurrections and the consequences of tampering with it. To me, Death the Horseman from season 5 to 10 always represented what I wanted God to be for the show, who is like a father figure to Dean. Also props to Jared for being chilling while trying to kill Bobby. Fun fact, there's not a single pie cameo this season while the rest of the seasons do. Oh my, the pie facts. Oh! Appointment in Samara is a really good episode, and not just because of Julian Richards coming back as death. You have complained about Dean this season, and, but I and I am sorry if I disagree. I completely understand him. Why wouldn't he remind Sam how completely unbalanced he is, considering what he has done before, both before and in previous episodes? For me, Dean doesn't come across as a whiny brat yet and he's going to do that in season 13 and onwards, but he definitely needs a lesson about responsibility at this point in his life, and the episode is a great way to do that. 
I feel that Dean's just a broken record. That's my main complaint. He just keeps saying the same thing. Like there's no any kind of variation to how they could be expressing it. The fact that they do just have him on this loop over and over again really just irritates me so much. I understand where he's coming from, but then when he says it so many fucking times in the same way, it just drives me nuts. Death's Challenge is just so satisfying to watch because he basically tells Dean what God told him in season five. Stop being a whiny brat, accept your responsibility and the consequences consequences of your actions. This is such a great message for the character and the audience. For that message alone, this is one of my favorite episodes of the season. Anyone else mention how random it is that Robert Englund, aka Freddy Krueger himself, I can't be the only one. I like how he's in here because he's technically speaking taking Dean to a, a dream -like slash death zone. He's the one who cr transfers him over, considering Freddy Krueger is the one who can transfer from both uh, the dream world to the real world. So I thought that was cool. Alright guys, thank you for your comments, and now we've got episode 12, Like a Virgin. <laughs> Give me guys' thoughts about that episode in the comments below, and I'll read those off in the next review. Otherwise guys, hope you're enjoying the reviews. If you are, leave a like on this video, and if you're interested in more, subscribe, and I'll see you guys next week. Thanks for watching the video. My name is Nitz, and you might remember me from the animated cult classic TV show, Undergrads. It's been a while, but I'm happy to say The Click is finally getting back together in an all-new movie, thanks to a successful Kickstarter campaign. But we are still asking for your support. To see any and all updates about the upcoming Undergrads movie, be sure to check out and like the Bring Back Undergrads Facebook page. And with any luck, we'll see you guys soon.